Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Elena. I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I was watching Extraction on Netflix. It's the one with Chris Hemsworth. And something came up that's come up a few times and I thought let's have a discussion about it. These action movies seem to always have the sequences where faceless troops with weapons just get murdered. This is not just extraction of course, lots of movies and TV shows have it. It's a common trope and I guess it's to illustrate the proficiency of the hero like John Wick and Supernatural, Angel Have Fallen just to name a few others. But instead it makes me feel that that is just such a waste of life. These men seem to have no value other than to bring up the body count. When I say this it brings me to a line that I read in a romance novel a few years ago, I guess when I was a teenager, so not a few years ago, it was I guess a while ago. So basically um, the whole plot of the novel was that this villain was coming to murder the female lead and the male lead was he came to protect her but he was being very blasé about it, he, I, very arrogant, I will, I will protect you, I will save you. and. She said this line that I can't even remember what the book was, but I just remember the line. She said, um, you might be the most important person in your world, but guess what, buddy? I'm also the most important person in mine. And to me, I just feel like in these movies, these nameless humans are just treated like nothing. They were just there to die. I am fully aware that I am taking this movie too seriously. But it is a simulation of life with embellishments, which means that this random person who just died theoretically had a life interwoven somewhere within the storyline. He had a history and hopes and dreams, friends and family. We just didn't know about it because it wasn't relevant to the story and it wasn't relevant to move the plot. But it's implied that it existed because the producers went through the trouble of paying a person to be there. They brought in a human being in our world to be in their movie, so that implies that this person existed within that world. So whenever I watch these movies and the, or TV shows and they start killing the unnamed humans off, I think of it as snapping threads and wonder what their day must have started like for them to end up where they ended up with either a bullet in the head or some other horrible way of dying. This is what got me thinking. Things are never black and white. Like, even in a shoot em action movie, if we can just assume that this unnamed human does have an actual history within this world, then we have to assume that there must be a reason why he's over there holding a gun trying to kill the hero. Like, why is he there? Why, why are you there trying to kill this person? Obviously, you must be there for a reason. The entire story implies that this uh, this person, his only purpose is there to die by the hand of the hero. That's his entire purpose. You never see his face, so you have no reason to care about him. He might as well be a robot or a training dummy. He isn't even important enough to have a name. How much power can he truly wield? And yet he's holding a gun and he's shooting at the hero. Someone definitely sent him there while they're somewhere nice and safe. Does anyone ever think about these things from the, un the unnamed human side? Like, he might not just want to die that day, he might even be scared or pray to go home to see his family at least one more time. I wonder, does the unnamed human think about how his day started normal and ended up being so crazy? When the, hum the hero just murders the unnamed human, I I it makes me think. What happens after the human, the, sorry, the, the, the hero tornado leaves town? Like, you know, when, when the hero comes, there's huge things happen. Explosions and, and, and buildings collapse and bodies everywhere. So obviously there's going to be funerals and, and, and the effects of that. Like when, when you have all these people are dying, then what happens after? Like the workplace. People talk about, oh, this person died during the big event that happened downtown or, or this happened or, or, you know, the things that happened. People talk about that after the hero lives. How could the hero in the story be the hero 
if you could just end life like that. Don't get me wrong, I get it. Most times the unnamed hero, the unnamed human is trying to kill the hero. But the hero is acting of his own free will. Usually he's acting out of vengeance. Because some villain, as usual, killed somebody in his family or, or they did something horrible to him. But the unnamed human, he's hired. He has no stake in the fight, except that he wants his next paycheck, which means that he's just looking to get paid. Maybe he's a bodyguard, or maybe the unnamed human is a police officer, then again he's looking for a paycheck but maybe he also wants to serve and protect. So the hero, they're just a body in the way of getting their vengeance, so with that in mind, there must also be some questions we need to ask ourselves about the hero that they're so willing to kill the unnamed humans. A lot of it has to do with how the story presents itself to us. History is written by the victors after all. We start the story on the hero side with the agenda. There's usually a story about some a story that strongly aligns with our values and it makes our blood boil. Everybody has a morality scale. It slides up and down based on circumstances. So while your belief is thou shalt not kill, your skills are flexible depending on the circumstances. So for example, if you love puppies to the moon and back and somebody murders a puppy in front of you, your thou shalt not kill scale goes all the way down to kill every last one of them dead. They lay down why the, the, what the hero is going to do at the end of the story is just and why you should be on the side from the very beginning so that when the killing starts at the end everybody's cheering that's how they get us then i always wonder how would a police captain tackle a real world scenario like what is presented in these movies let's say in a, a, a city where some shady underhanded dealings are going down and some badass hero is coming to lay down the law and the corrupt overlords send a message down to the police precincts, do they see the hero as a terrorist? What about the hero though? Does he then attack the cops? Because they're going to be coming at him with everything they, they have because the message is that he is a terrorist. So does he kill them? <laughs> is he killing them? Is, is he, if he kills them, then what happens after he clears his name? Does it even matter then? Because the movie, the movie when a movie ends it doesn't mean that consequences go away he might have been right about the the reasons why he started the the whole going after them but when you start killing people murder is murder and especially if you went after cops they were just doing their job so what 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 about if there's like um civilian collateral damage or destruction of property He'd have to face the music for that too, so even if he's not guilty initially, just by killing any of the unnamed humans, even if they were coming after him and he was defending himself, according to criminal law, he's, he would then technically become a terrorist. So if he manages to get away with it, let's say, let's say uh, some crazy lawyer just stands on his side and they manage to get him out of this. And then he, he's able to get out of it. I just, I don't know how because usually the body count is so high. He gets away with it. How does he sleep at night? There's so much death on his, on his conscience. Especially if these people were innocent. How does he sleep at night? How does he weigh? How does he weigh? What, 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 how does he weigh a life? How many lives is it before he cannot sleep? And especially if there's so many people that he killed. Like how far back do the skills have to go before he is unable to sleep who is right then the hero who kills for a just cause or the unnamed human who's fighting terrorists i use quotation marks here for a corrupt government but he doesn't know it so do the heroes assume that all the unnamed humans just automatically support the ideals of the employers do they not know about paychecks <laughs> Do the answers change if the police know that the government is corrupt but their lives or the lives of their family are in danger? Like for example, um, I don't remember which movie I was watching. 
maybe I, I won't tell her because YouTube might flag it but eh, whatever my channel has like no no viewers but I was watching this movie I th but it had to do with the Nazis and it was one of the Germans were, they were first it was jokey and then one of the ones who really supported the Nazis he asked the, the another German person um, why why aren't you hail Hitler and then the, the man realized oh my god I might be in trouble and so he he was also German but he immediately realized that his life might also be in danger and then he suddenly went he said the thing you know the thing that you're not supposed to say and he automatically said it because he realized his life was in danger too so if if fear of death or fear of death of your family is it worse than corrupting your morals like that's the question like do you d does it change if you know that your family's life is in danger or what about if an officer is in the thick of it like let's say this is the day of the big fight and and the, the hero is like headshotting people or he's like stabbing people or he's like doing all the crazy things the hero does on on when they're doing that big the big fight and then he's like oh my god this is a little bit too real for me i don't want to die and then he decides to abandon his post and he because he he does this he doesn't believe in this he'd rather see his family again than die for a cause that he doesn't believe in should the hero still defeat him just because he works for the the bad guy should the hero let him go it, it's it's this is what i've been thinking about like it's a lot of questions like it's not black and white they just kill these people like they're I know okay I know it's a movie it's not that important they're just the reason they don't show their faces because they're not they're literally just supposed to be NPCs but you know they build a world and world building it means that all the people that they will go through the effort of having people walking back and forth so that means that these people exist within that world they go through the effort of having people with guns so that means these people exist within that world so these people are there I, I cannot see them as NPCs I can only see them as people who exist within that world so that means that they have rich lives a history and potential for a future which gets snuffed out by the hero so that's the only way I can see it so when I see them getting killed it gives me so many questions to ask but anyway <laughs> Um, that was what I was thinking about. Um, again, I'm still trying to get this whole video thing down. So I'm not going to edit this. I know it was pretty bad. But it is what it is. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> also, like and subscribe. Even if it was kind of rough. If you got what I was trying to go for. Please like and subscribe. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you. <laughs>